Alrighty, today is truly day one in Korea and it is like 32 degrees outside right now, 32 degrees Celsius. Hot and humid. Oh man, mid-September, it used to not be like this when I was little. I guess the summers are getting longer. Hagen does here is like 15 bucks, but why would you get Hagen does when you have a bunch of Korean ice creams? I decided to get a little bit of uh, ice cream treat. I gotta eat it quickly before it melts. You see that countdown? That's the countdown of when the ad will end and it'll go back to the program. So they're showing ads in the meantime, but they're counting down when it'll end. That's pretty cool. I am on my way to see a friend from elementary school that I haven't seen in over 20 years since elementary school. So <laughs> it'll be pretty interesting. I talked on the phone with her, but haven't met in person in two decades. Climbing these stairs to go home is a real workout. So many stairs to climb to go home. Oh my god. Look at that. It is the eighth full moon of the year. Perfectly round. I'm almost home. It's not just the temperature. It's so humid, that's why. I got back from my friend's place having dinner with her family and it's 12.15 a.m. I'm going to, just about to go to bed. But before I do, I just wanted to mention one thing, which is that I, I'm speaking with her family in Korean, right? And when they found out that I speak English with a native accent, like a North American accent, her family kind of reacted like, wow, jealous that I have a native English accent. And it's weird because in Korea, you don't need to have a native accent, English accent, to survive in Korea because people speak Korean. And you do need to know a little bit of English. You need to know some English words to get by in Korea because of we've adopted a lot of the English language into the Korean vocabulary. But speaking English really is... You don't need to speak English at all in Korea to get by. It's it's unnecessary and why why would you even want to speak English I mean you have to do English exams and studying for a test that's a different skill you don't even people who I'm, this is a bit off topic but people who study for these tests they can't even speak English well because studying for tests is one thing speaking English well is another they're different things but all that to say speaking English is a like a high status thing in Korea but especially with a native accent, but it really is unnecessary. I mean, you don't, there's no use for it. It's, it's, it's useless to speak English well other than to show off. I mean, wh when would you use English to have a conversation in Korea unless you're speaking to a foreigner, which is like hardly ever. So, I mean, they're obsessed with teaching their kids, like even my friend, putting her daughter into English teaching kindergarten and all that but it's just so weird that Korea really prioritizes and looks up to having a native English accent when it is such a useless thing to have in Korea it's just a status thing more than a practical thing that's my point it's not practical to speak English well in Korea but it's definitely a high status thing. It's that when you speak in English with a native accent, that means you're educated. You either had the money to learn English from a very young age uh, from good native speaking English teachers, or you lived abroad, had enough money to live abroad and be educated abroad, and then came back. So either way, it, it's a status symbol because it means you got high education or expensive education when you were little. I think Koreans are definitely more status conscious. And that's one thing that I'm not really liking about Korean culture versus Canadian culture. Um, that status is such an important thing in Korea. And 
Canada, less so. I prefer the less so much better. Just to give you a bit of backstory about myself, my parents are both Korean, but my family and I, we all speak in English to each other. And that's because my parents, both of them, grew up in foreign countries separately. Uh, and when they met, um, they were more comfortable with English. So um, I learned English first when I was a baby and a kid. And this was when I was growing up in the Philippines. I was born and raised in the Philippines because of my dad's work there at the time. And then I moved to Korea when I was four years old, turning five. And that's when I learned Korean for the first time in kindergarten. So I always had a, a native English speaking accent first and then learned Korean. And I was good with Korean and sounded like a native speaker, native speaker until I came to Canada for two decades and then didn't speak Korean much at all. And now when I speak Korean, I have an accent, that's what people tell me. Like it's an American accent when I speak Korean. So now my Korean is subpar. <laughs> like even today, I don't know some words and I had trouble trying to talk in Korean, um, trying to translate some English words into Korean because I didn't know what those Korean words were. But a little that was a little bit of backstory about why English was my first language, even though I grew up in Korea. Anyways, it's getting late, so I'll see you tomorrow.